Previously, as the trio picked up their dragon claw blade from the swordsman's shop, they were ready to begin their adventure. Yu, Clara, and Katya boarded the sailor's ship to begin their adventure. Yu noticed that Katya was in a good mood. She said that she had always wanted an adventure. But Demetrius was acting quite suspicious when dropping off Alicia. Katya almost thought he was from the agency. Alicia was sleeping peacefully while Clara was reading something. When Yu asked what was it, she said that it was a grimoire. She thought that given where they were going, she should learn to use offensive magic as well as healing magic. Now Yu seemed interested in. Clara was happy to study with him. She showed him what he could do with the magic if he learned it. She made a sharp arrow and used it on the ship, leaving them amazed. It was indeed amazing, but it seemed a little weak compared to what Yu could make. After a while, Yu finished doing the supplies and all they had to do was wait for them to arrive. Alicia was still sleeping. Yu thought it would be hard for her to accompany him on such a trip because, despite her actual age, she looked small. He reminded when Demetrius said that she had been put to sleep for 10 years expected for the bare minimum amount of time since she was 5 years old. He was wondering what the world looked like in her eyes with a slumbering acquired skill. She was still so cute, but Clara wasn't sure how she would react if she told her that. Suddenly she woke up and said that it was nice to be called cute, but she still had a lot of room to grow. Katya was shocked that she said she had room to grow, but it was normal for a child to grow up when she was sleeping all the time. You asked if Alicia was awake and she said that she was asleep. Apparently she had a skill called sleep supremacy and she could at least see what was going on around her while she slept. That's why she was ready to go to sleep whenever she wanted. You realized that this meant she could keep watch during the night shift even while they were asleep since she was able to know her surroundings and wake up if something was wrong. Alicia wondered how you could trust her when they had just met, and if he was worried something might happen when they were asleep. He explained that being aware and sleeping was essential and he didn't have any doubts about her, but he still suggested rotating shifts if she was too tired for that. Luckily Alicia doesn't get tired. They didn't know what was going to happen in the polar regions, so it was a relief for you and the others to know that they were safe at night. Alicia asked Clara and Katya if they got nervous around you. Clara comfortably stated that she was saved by you, so she didn't. Katya didn't feel anxious around him either. Alicia seemed more certain about herself and promised them to take care of the whole night watch. Then of course said that she was going to sleep again and told them to call her if they needed anything. They wished good night to her which made her smile and she went back to sleep peacefully. In the next chapter they arrive at the white desert. Alicia never knew there was a place like this in the world and seemed amazed. Katya then explained that it was called ice magic. And at this altitude magic crystallizes and floats in the sky. It was said to be a light that comes down to earth like this. The magic of the ice was coloring the ground white. Clara was both amazed and scared by the beauty of the place. It was indeed a world full of uncertainty. You seemed to like the outfit he was wearing. The clothes were so thin and easy to move in, and he wasn't cold at all. Katya bought a very high-grade one as she assumed that it would go down as an expense and that the temperature control function should work perfectly. But she reminded them that it consumes a lot of magic so they should be careful when they get tired. They then checked their surroundings and it seemed like a lot of people came here. Yu was surprised as he didn't think they would all get off here. Katya reminded them again that they were in a relatively easy environment here in the polar circle. She then pointed to somewhere. That place was close to Moiras, and they could store their supplies in there. There were a few accommodations like that and they only exist along the coast. Adventurers came here to try a few things and if they didn't work out, they turned back to the next ship. Nonetheless, she heard many never return from this place. She then mentioned that the White Desert had never been thoroughly investigated, and the reason was a stone called Ishe Ora was often found there. It was a stone that's been exposed to the magic ice and is often used in weapons. If they bring it back to the continent, it would be worth some money. The stone can be found just about anywhere, even here on the coast, so they don't have to go all the way to the backwoods for this. You concluded that the White Desert was still uncharted territory. He seemed like he was getting more and more excited about the place. Clara wondered if they could find any traces of her people here. Katya said that it was a polar region because it was uninhabitable but there was still a chance so they can't say it is impossible. With that, they begin their first expedition. First things first, they needed to climb that hill and scout out the terrain ahead or the remains of one. You explained that they were looking for a river because even in the dry desert, plants were growing which means there could be an old river around. You started to explain everything before they climbed. The rocky mountain had some steps but it looked pretty gentle. At their current strength, they should be fine but they need to be extra careful because it had to do with the climate. There was fine sand on the surface so even if there was no slope, they would slide right off. And since the terrain was dry, it was also prone to cracking and peeling. That's why they have to be extra careful. With Yu's lead, they started moving. Thanks to Yu's detailed instructions, they managed to climb the mountain without any scratches or trouble. They were all taken aback by the view. From the view, 
There was a place that looked like where the water used to flow. Clara didn't know there was a trail that big and wondered if there used to be a big river running through it. They didn't know that, of course, but that was what happens to everything as time goes on. You notice something in Clara, so he asked. She said that she was just a little thirsty. You was also thirsty too as the air was so dry. Also, he wondered if anyone else was getting sweaty. The others were sweating too, which was a weird thing. You figured that it was better they watched their hydration. They sat and drank water, which felt great. You warned them to not drink too much. And if possible, he wanted to refill their water supply from a water source. It would be much easier if all that whiteness was snow, but unfortunately it was just light. There wasn't that much difference though. It is a well-known fact that if you eat snow, you will consume more energy if you don't. Using a special technique of melting it, you can extract some drinking water. Now that they all rested enough, it was time to get out of there. It was more dangerous to go down a rock wall like this, so he warned them to be careful. Clara didn't know that. Yu was about to tell them a story of a climber who got stuck in the middle of a wall, but Katya stopped him from scaring them more. They then noticed that Alicia wasn't there. When they looked around, she was still looking at the view. She was finally seeing the world as she only knew a basement of stone and iron, and had never seen anything like this before. She had never thought she would be in such a good mood because it wasn't like her. You told her to come close to him as it wasn't safe to stand there. She listened to his words and was about to turn back, but then the rock she was standing on cracked. You managed to catch her at the last second and successfully saved her. Alicia was about to apologize to him with her trembling voice, but you said that it was okay, and told her to be careful next time. The girls asked if they were okay, and Alicia stated that they were. She then wondered if they were worried about her. Clara said of course, and stated that they needed to heal her as soon as possible if she was injured. She then noticed the scar on her hand and healed immediately. Alicia seemed surprised by her power so she explained that healing magic was her specialty. Alicia was about to say something else then changed her mind and thanked her. She then turned to Yu and thanked him. Yu was just glad that she was okay. Now that everyone was safe, it was time to collect themselves and find some water. After a while, Clara found a flowing water somewhere. They went down to check the flow and it looked good. Nothing about it looked odd and Yu's ability wasn't reacting to it either. Katya wondered if the flow was important. You said that without a constant flow, the water can slowly begin to develop bacteria and parasites. Any living creature that dies begins to dissolve and rot, but since it flows, that was not going to happen. He filled his hand with the water and tasted it. The water was indeed cold and fresh. They were lucky to find water and Clara wondered if they were going to camp here today. You answered that they would put the tent up further up. Alicia wondered if it would be a hassle to get water if they did that. You explained that the current was calm right now but it could just be trees and rocks choking the water upstream. If it were to collapse, the water would rush into the narrow canyon, a flash flood. If the water suddenly comes rushing in here, there would be nothing they could do so they need to be careful. Alicia learned a lot from you. You gave the setting up the camp mission to them because he was going to go find some food and Alicia wanted to join him. When they started to look for food, you thought he saw something. When he looked down, he saw two big mouse monsters. He wanted to try a surprise attack on them. He wondered if using his attract skill would be the best move. Charge skill takes time to use, meanwhile they could just escape. Dragon's breath would turn their bones to ashes and he can't use trap bud either as there were no fresh leaves. In the end, they would have to do it the hard way. He whispered to Alicia to stay there and wait for him and left the hill. When the monsters saw him, they immediately run away just as he thought. He used his attraction skill to catch their attention, which he did but the monsters came right at him with full speed. They were surrounding him and they were so fast that he couldn't even see them clearly. He used his hardening skill to not get injured. He was so annoyed by the fact that he couldn't even follow them with his eyes. But even if he can't follow them with his eyes, he knew he was the only one they were after. He concentrated and managed to catch one of them but the other one was trying to run away. It would be bad if it gets away at that speed but there was nothing he could do at the moment. Surprisingly, the monster stopped. He thought there was a trap or a poison gas but it was actually Alicia. She told him to get the monster as her condition wouldn't last long. After catching them both, you asked what was her skill. She said that it was the power of her slumber skill. She can manipulate her opponent to fall asleep but she won't be able to if they were in a high state of arousal or has a good amount of strength left in them. She was able to use it this time because Yu was able to exhaust the enemy earlier when it lost its partner. She was him using his powers so she thought she would give a hand. Yu asked if she came with him to observe his power and she said that the reaction the creature displayed was unreasonably excessive and wondered what Yu did. Yu explained his power and said that he wasn't hiding it but felt bad for not telling her. Alicia commented that his methods were quite unorthodox and wondered if she need to intervene. This made him chuckle a little. Draining the blood was an important part of the process, but he didn't need to explain that in the moment. They decided to end the hunting and have some dinner at the camp. When they arrived at the camp, Yu started to dismantling and it seemed like it was completed. Katya stated that she was a little shocked when she saw what he was doing, but now that she saw the end product it looked quite appetizing. 
Clara reminded him that he mentioned soup earlier and wondered what he was cooking today. It was the animal version of the fishball soup he made earlier. Katya seemed to like that fish soup so she got excited. The first step was to beat the meat with a knife until it was ground into a pulp. Then they added the bones because he saw them bouncing around on the rocks and his bones were mostly cartilage. Because if he had hard bones it definitely would have shattered on impact bouncing on those rocks. If the cartilage was small enough they could eat it and he thought it would give them a nice little aftertaste. Alicia stated that his cooking style was quite unique. After the meat and the bones were done it was time to mix in the spices like salt, pepper and garlic flakes. It was to eliminate the smell and enhance the aroma. This was chitatapu, an Ainu style of cooking. It was made by simmering grounded meat with a lot of vegetables. It was a dish called ohau. You had been wanting to try it since he saw it in a manga so he was pretty excited. After making them into little balls it was ready to stew. He used the old type of lighter to light the fire. Alicia was shocked when she saw him doing it. She couldn't believe he made a fire with it as she had never seen that before. You figured that this tool wasn't that popular in this world yet. Clara was also amazed by Yu's knowledge about everything. Alicia hoped that his knowledge would come in hand to him. Yu was about to say something humble, but then saw Clara's cute face and his face turned red and his heart started to beat faster. He tried to focus on cooking and said that now that he got the fire going, all he need to do is throw in the dried wild vegetables and they were done. In the meantime, he told them to say if they had any other requests. They waited for the food to get cooked while talking. And after a while, Ohau with Chitatapu was ready to be eaten. Clara and Katya were excited but Alicia wasn't sure if the bones were necessary. She said that since there was so much meat they didn't need to mix it with the bones. Yu said that he thought it would look as good as in the manga. Alicia gave it a try and tasted the meatball. Her eyes were sparkling when she tasted it. The chewy texture made her cheeks twitch, and every time she chewed the texture changed. Clara also praised the meal by saying that that was what wild vegetables tasted like, and it was nice and refreshing with a bitter aftertaste. Clara stated that the fat in the meat was so sweet, but thanks to the vegetables it wasn't strong. Yu was also happy with the results. They continue eating their food, and Alicia said she didn't expect it to be this good. She used to think a meal was just a meal and didn't understand why they were getting so excited about Yu's food, but now she understood why. Yu was glad she changed her perspective because there was still much more in this world. On the second day of the expedition, they were once again climbing. Katya thought this would be more tiring than it was, but the steps were still challenging her, and it was time like this that she cursed herself for being small. Alicia agreed and suggested to make it their goal to try their best. Katya envies her as she has so much potential. She then helped her to climb. Alicia said that she would understand his impatience when she got to the same age as Katya. Katya was about to let her go for acting bold. Clara wondered what you made before they left. You seemed to forget about that so he opened his bag and took out a box of chocolate. Katya and Clara were excited to see this sweet dessert. You mentioned that it wasn't just chocolate and it also had crushed nuts boiled down with sugar and syrup. He was exploring the market in Moiris the other day and he noticed they had chocolate along with a few other items. In this world, he had heard that chocolate was a popular beverage and a trendy and fashionable snack in the city. They usually preferred solid chocolate. Clara seemed to hesitate to eat it and asked if she could. You didn't mind if she did but it was a food ration. The girls were all looking at him with many expectations so he had to remind them a few things first. First was that food ration. It was full of calories and it wasn't too hard to digest. Even if it doesn't fill them up it would give them the energy to move for a while. He said that everyone gets three pieces each and once they have eaten it all, they wouldn't get any more else on the rest of their expedition. Last but not least, he stated that if it was possible they shouldn't eat no more than one per day. In a situation where food was always available, they would just gain weight and complacent. Clara wanted to eat his piece in that moment. Seeing her cute face you had no other option than accepting. They all decided to eat their first pieces and were amazed by the taste. You mentioned that even if it was a little too sweet, it was easy to eat while they were on the move and it would give them a lot of energy. Katya was afraid that she would gain weight and it would affect her work, but it wasn't like she was going to gain weight anytime soon as she would be moving around a lot, and if she ate enough, she would be fine. You hoped that they only eat the rest when they needed to and reminded them that it was for emergencies only. However, if they felt overwhelmed, he was sure it would give them a boost. Alicia seemed to understand the concept of the chocolate and Katya wished to share those with the other knights one day. She praised you for having unique ideas and stated that it was like they were living hundreds of years in the future. Now that they eat their energy boost chocolates it was time to go but you suddenly stopped and noticed that the sand over somewhere was rising up. Not only the sand was moving around but it was coming towards them a full speed, and the least expected thing happened. A deep white shark came out of the sand. The shark was swimming inside the sand and it was coming right at them. They managed to dodge its attacks on them but they needed to be careful. 
Katya stated that it was said it senses sound and ounces on its prey when they were least suspecting. The shark was coming at them once again and you knew it was him the shark was after. He took out his weapon and told Katya to look after for the others. You thought they would be fine as long as they knew where he was coming from. But there was one thing he didn't consider. The size of the shark. Even if he pierced his head with his blade when he lunged at him, he would still be crushed by him. Plan B was to attack him from behind where it's unprotected. But the shark went into the sand again. Katya asked you if he was okay. He confirmed her and he noticed that the shark was using the sand as a weapon. He wanted to assume that it couldn't see over the sand and was just reacting to whatever was making noise. They could throw something to lure it and if it tried to attack, they could intercept it from the side but there was one problem. Katya seemed like she was thinking about that issue too. They didn't know what to throw. He only packed the bare essentials that were needed for this expedition. And considering what lies ahead, it was not a good idea to toss any of it away as a lure. He just needed anything that could be dropped to fool it into thinking it was prey. Then he decided to go in. Katya was about to object, but he told her to wait and watch, and he would give her a chance to make her move but she needed to stay silent for a while. He started to walk and the shark started to chase him. He then jumped highly. He was awakened by the ohau he ate yesterday and got a new skill which made him able to bounce like a rubber ball. While he was bouncing he got close to Katya to give her the chance to attack. When he got close enough he gave the signal and Katya jumped on the shark, cutting him in two pieces. You and Katya seemed pretty happy to be able to defeat it. Clara and Alicia were relieved. Katya asked you if they could eat the shark. You already decided that it was their dinner for tonight. He was sure that they were going to like it. Without procrastinating, you started the cooking process. Even though there was a river nearby, he never thought he would be handling fish in the desert. He told the girls that the dinner menu this time was simple. It was deep white munier and sashimi raw fish. Alicia didn't know about raw fish and wondered if it was as good as the cartilage. You explained that meat and raw fish were quite popular in his country, but he could understand while she was a bit skeptical about it. Before he started prepping, he asked if she was dine with eating sashimi. He wanted to confirm her that she didn't need to force herself and there were other ways to cook fish. Alicia told you to not treat her like a child. She told him to have faith in his cooking. You thanked her for that and mentioned that he was just asking because if the taste of eating the dish is 100 points. Experience of sharing the same feeling was 120 points, so the food tasted better when they all eat it together. Katya and Clara agreed with him and they started cooking. He was hoping to get a blade designed for dismantling but they didn't have the luxury of that. He cut the fish and noticed that the blade went in easily without any resistance. He wondered if he could eat the fins. Then Alicia asked why he didn't just eat it. He explained that it takes a lot of time and effort, but he was pretty interested in high-class foods. This made Katya and Clara even more curious about the food. It didn't have much taste, but it had a really nice texture and it absorbed the flavors of sauces and soups. You decided to save it for later as they could use it for their broth later or just make a soup with it. He was astonished by the fat on the meat. Clara and Katya had never seen anything like this either. You was regretting not having soy sauce. The quality of the meat and the sweetness of the fat can be smelled from everywhere. If only just a single drop of soy sauce mixed with this dish would have invited those who ate it to the heavens. But he didn't have a choice, but suddenly he realized that he could season it with salt and wasabi. He took out the root of protection and said that they were going to grind it into small pieces with a washed stone. He could smell the fragrance already. It was different from the tube stuff as it had a depth to it that was elegant. He then mixed it with salt and he was done making his own wasabi salt. For the munier, he used the lean parts. And with that, white shark sashimi and white shark munier were ready to be eaten. He mentioned that he sprinkled a little salt on the sashimi and suggested they eat it with a little bit of grated root to ward off evil. Clara amazed that he made all that in such a short time. He had to make as much as he could before it lost its freshness. Katia decided to pass on the root amulet, and Alicia stated that a part of her was wondering if it was edible even though she found it to look delicious. Meanwhile, Clara was about to faint from the taste of the food. It melted into their mouth and the wasabi and salt was clearing away the slight smell of blood. Alicia finally tasted it and found it delicious. She stated that this was worth of praise because the refreshing aroma from the sashimi was on a whole other level. You thanked her for the detailed food report while giggling but then surprised that the salt itself didn't have much of a scent because even the best horse sashimi wouldn't smell like this. He asked about the munier and they tasted that too. Not surprisingly, it tasted delicious. Alicia, who wasn't used to use cooking, seemed like she fell in love with the texture and the flavor. Yu was shocked how she was able to describe what she tasted in such detailed sentences. After finishing all the meat, they were satisfied. Yu always wanted to try shark sashimi and it was beyond what he expected. Clara noticed this was only something they could experience in the polar regions because they wouldn't be able to eat sashimi when it's been out too long. Yu was so satisfied and full that he could fall asleep happily, but was able to stop himself. 
It was time they should be moving again because the sun would be setting soon as Katya said. At night they put on their tent and were sleeping. But you woke up and noticed that Clara wasn't in the tent. He went outside and asked Clara what she was doing. She looked at the stars and said how beautiful they were. You was also amazed by how he could see it clearly. There was no light pollution in the desert so the sky was pretty clear. He didn't realize it until now because he had been so exhausted, he always went to sleep early. Clara said that she used to think the polar regions were a very scary place but they were eating so much good food together and having such an exciting trip with the girls. And you. She also had been wondering what the Maori people were like. She confessed that she still hadn't accepted that she was in the polar region yet. But when she thinks that her real father and mother might be looking at the same sky, gave her courage. You comforted her, saying that they were going to find her parents. Clara was sure about that because she was in a good health now thanks to Yu's meals. There was a lot of food in Yu's country that she had never seen before, so she stated that she would like to go there herself. Yu's heart started to pound and his face got red. Clara then remembered that he said it was a complicated situation before so she apologized immediately, but Yu said that it was okay. The thought of his family looking at the same skies seemed unlikely to him. He then promised to go together with Clara if the day ever comes when he can go home. They then noticed something at their back, and when they looked at the tent, they saw Katya and Alicia looking at them secretly. You asked what they were doing, but they told them to not worry about it and continue with firm faces. But there was no way they could while they were watching them like creeps. They came out of the tent and stated that they had something to tell you. Katya said that Clara wasn't the only one who was cheered up by his cooking and they were looking forward to working with him. Yu smiled happily and also stated that their feelings were same. Meanwhile somewhere in the polar regions, a big monster was in a cave waiting for them. On the fourth day of exploring the white desert, the weather started to get pretty cold which concerned Yu. The closer they got to the center of the island the colder it got but luckily, they didn't have any food or water problems. However, they felt like it was the end of the world. After walking for a while they ended up being in front of a huge cave entrance. This made them hesitate a little. It was like something was waiting inside and it drew them in. However, Yu remembered that some humans in the past lived inside caves so it wouldn't be surprising to find some remains of an ancient civilization. Yu stated that he wanted to go in and investigate and ask about their opinions. Clara and Katya seemed pretty confident and Alicia had already decided that she was going to work with them whichever they chose. Now that they were unanimous it was time to go. But you wanted to try something first and threw a rock inside the cave. The reason why he did that was because it was always a good idea to make sure there was nothing inside. And most importantly, they needed a torch. There was some visibility but it could get pretty dark deeper in. Fire also makes it easier to detect if there is toxic gas in the air. When he mentioned carbon dioxide, Clara seemed pretty confused so he stopped there. They went inside the cave and not so long later they found something glowing in the dark. Katya explained that it was Ha Hikarigoke. It is a strange plant that absorbs dark magic of dark areas, using it to emit light. It looked pretty when they looked at it up closely. There was also something on Earth called Hikari Moss, but it doesn't emit light on its own, it just reflects the light. The fire moved, and he noticed that there was wind in the cave. This cave could lead them anywhere. It could be a small hole, or a loop leading them somewhere else entirely. But this made him even more excited. But there was just one problem the light outside didn't reach this deep but it was still bright thanks to the Hikari Moss. Along with that, it was warmer than outside, and there was a river flowing. All conditions here were perfect for life to thrive, but there was no sign of humans or even demons. He had a weird feeling he couldn't really describe. The more they continued moving, the more Yu was being amazed by how huge the place was. Katya also liked the cave. They then decided to look around, but Alicia seemed off. She looked behind herself and Yu noticed it. When he asked, she couldn't answer because Clara already noticed something and told him to look at it. It was a huge crab. Katya immediately kept her guard up and questioned what the hell was that thing. You knew they were doomed because while they fought with Dragon, he saw anger and fierce emotions in the dragon's eyes. But this time its eyes were like an engine. It was almost like a machine. The crab moved and attacked them but they managed to get away. They were all astonished by how powerful it was. There were only two options which was being eaten by it or attacked. You told Alicia and Clara to stay in a safe space. Katya was right next to him and asked what was their plan. He told her to shield and he would be the decoy meanwhile she was going to surround and attack him. He was as reckless as ever as Katya said. He used his attraction and hardening skills at the same time and started to run but then noticed that his lure wasn't working. And Katya was the one getting its attention. Katya figured that the crab was prioritizing the closest targets which sounded so mechanical. The only thing they could do is to get closer and look for an opening. Yu was trying to attack but the monster was too strong, and even with his hardening skill he wouldn't be able to survive if he got hit. Katya found an opening and tried to stab its skin but it was so tough. 
Before you could notice, the tail of the monster was coming right at him. He used his weapon to block and got the minimum damage. When he checked, the liquid the carb released was frozen. They were all shocked. Karen warned me to watch out for the tail and not let it touch them. But that wasn't the easiest thing to do as the carb was literally shooting the frozen liquid. You could get away from them but he knew that if those claws caught him he was done for, because even his hardening skill wouldn't stop him from being frozen. Alicia was there watching them and thought it was a good idea. She then noticed that Clara was holding a grimoire. Clara promised before that she wouldn't drag them down this time so she was trying to find a way to help them. After searching for a while it seemed like she had an idea. Meanwhile Katya seemed to having a hard time fighting with the monster. Fortunately you saved her at the last second before she was about to get hit by the frozen liquids. If they keep attacking blindly they would never manage to damage the monster. You remembered that even on earth he had a hard time with crabs because the spikes hurt like hell. But the taste of the crab gave him an idea. He told Katya to aim for the joints because they should have the least protection on the body. Katya seemed confused so he asked if she could do it. She asked about his opinion and he said that he had more strength and speed than her but she had more experience in terms of combat. So he comfortably stated that he believed in her. This gave her enough courage to do it. They started to move at the same time and it seemed like Crab was aiming at you. While he was dodging its attacks one by one, Katya found an opening and attacked its joints. Just as you thought it went through and the back of the joints was relatively soft. He was a little slower now but from the looks of it, he was not feeling any pain or danger. And was still acting mechanical to a fault. However, if they damage a machine too much, it's bound to start developing performance degradation. They didn't lose any hope or confidence and kept attacking him collectively. But suddenly the crab monster stopped. This made them think that he was getting weaker, but it was only just to change his aim to Clara and Alicia. Clara thought fast and immediately started chanting but Katya didn't think they would make it in time. But Alicia was faster and she used slumber. Just as she thought if the enemy had no more fighting spirit, she was going to pass for a moment. It was Clara's turn and she used Ballista to harm the crab. She called out to Yu, stating that they would be fine and he should do his best. Yu and Katya started moving and cut his joints one by one. The crab didn't seem to be able to move anymore. But there was one thing they didn't notice that his tail was right behind them. Alicia was the closest target and Clara told her to run away but she seemed shocked. She recalled the time when she met with a girl when she was a child. The girl seemed like she really loved Alicia. She was with her from time to time but unfortunately, she died. When she saw her dead body, the others asked if she was okay and she seemed emotionless. She said that death was hard to grasp, even when it was right in front of her. She then came to her senses and noticed that the tail was right in front of her. Before she got shot, Yu guarded her and inhaled the biggest breath to use her dragon breath skill. After that he called out for Katya and she made the last attack that caused the crab to tremble on the ground. With shock and happiness Yu couldn't hold his laughter. With relaxation Clara let herself on the floor. Alicia, with a guilty voice, asked why he risked his life to save her. Her voice trembled and she questioned why he would help while she did not benefit him. She was on the urge to cry her eyes out. You simply replied by stating that they were friends. Even if there was no benefit, he would still help her, and that was all. She thanked him with shyness and Yu patted her head. Now that everything was settled, Yu was getting hungry, so they decided to eat in the cave today. The girls didn't seem so surprised by that. The cooking process didn't go exactly as they planned. The crab's skin was so hard that you couldn't even cut it with a dragon knife at all. He thought it would have been faster to use the Dirk sword instead and he was right. However, even with the Dirk sword he still needed a lot of concentration to cut it. Katya was able to do this with just a single swing and whilst moving too, which made him realize how amazing she was. When they peeled the skin, it looked delicious. Clara had seen carbs before but never imagined eating them so she was wondering what kind of dish it would be. You decided to state the night's menu, sashimi, grilled crab, and crab shabu. First things first, he started with crab shabu. He was planning to make a broth from deep white fish and crab shells. For the grilled crabs, the shell was cut out, the meat was placed on top, and then it was simply grilled. The girls were watching him while their mouths were watering. After a couple of hours, all the dishes were ready to be eaten. They seemed to be weirded out by the crab meat but were still amazed. You told them to dip it in the pot and eat. When he showed them, they were all shocked by how the meat opened like a flower. They started to eat and described the taste as refreshing and elegantly sweet, and said that it had a good smell. You also liked the texture as the flavor wrapped around his tongue, like it was trying to sweeten it. He wondered if that was what kissing was like while looking at Clara unintentionally. They continued to eat the crab, but Clara wasn't sure if she should put it in the broth, but you encouraged her. She eventually did it and was amazed by the flavor of the broth. You mentioned that crab shabu is made by cutting into the meat and that was where the broth comes into play. The harmony between the cooked part and the raw part was exquisite as Katya said. They continued to eat while you was observing them. He thought about how true the saying that people become quiet when they eat crab. After they were all full, it was time to go to bed. 
They put up a tent, but were still thinking about the meal they just ate. Yu, Alicia, and Katya then noticed that Clara was zoned out. When they asked if she was okay, she said that she felt like tomorrow she would be able to take another step forward. They seemed impressed by her positivity. On the following day, they continued exploring the cave while still thinking about the delicious food they ate. You reminded them not to let their guard down as they would never know what they would find next. There was another cavern and when they looked at it, they were faced with a destroyed village. Clara immediately started to check every single house in the village, but there was no one so she had to shout. But the silence remained. She disappointedly sat on the ground and gave up. She thought she would be able to find someone from the Maori people, but there was no one in this destroyed village. But Katya stated that it looked like this place had been uninhabited for a while. They started to explore the village and you noticed that the place was only the bare minimum to survive. It wasn't much but it was proof that there was life here. He had a feeling that this place was finished rather than abandoned. They were barely surviving and it still didn't work out. You unwillingly told them that they should stop looking for the Maori and start looking for their traces. While they were looking, Katya called them to show the house that had no damage whatsoever. The reason why the building wasn't destroyed was probably because it was made of stone. You tried to open the door but it didn't even budge. Alicia said that they have to use force but even you couldn't open it with his strength so she didn't seem very enthusiastic. Clara tried to use her magic to open it and she succeeded. They went inside but there was no sign of life at all. You noticed that there was a stone desk and books on it. They grabbed the books and went outside of the house to read it. The cover was a language Katya and you couldn't read. Clara said that the book was a journal. They asked if she could read it and she opened a book and started to read. The book was written in a non-existent language. The writer enchanted it to cast a translation spell that only worked on their people. And the book tells the end of one of the branches that grew from the great Maori tree, which had grown throughout the world. Clara couldn't hold her tears anymore and started to cry. She knew that it was the Maori people who lived there and they were forced out of their lands when their healing powers were discovered to make them immortal. And they ended up in this place. At first, things were going well for them, until the giant crab they met yesterday, Grand Keon, took up residence. They were trapped and had no way to escape. And because of that, they were unable to secure any food or anything else. That was the book said about Clara's people. Yu was now sure that she was from the Maori clan. Clara thanked Yu for avenging their deaths. Yu thought he saw the Maori people behind Clara so he looked her up again but it was just her. They then opened the second book and the letters were growing. Katya said that it was one of those devices that helps in conjuring magic and was called a magic book. It was a way of manifesting magic by passing through letters that had been inscribed with a chant. Clara chanted a word and a huge rock came out of the ground. They were all amazed by Clara's skill. She managed to pull off a powerful spell with just a single word. Clara explained that icicle was a spell concocted by the old Maori to capture the mana attributes of an ancient and powerful demon. It could be because she ate some of the Grand King that she was able to use it. It said it can be used by eating monsters called ancient species which is called ancient magic. The reason the Maori fled was to hide this knowledge from the people on the main continent. If she knew how to use Icicle earlier, she could have fought that monster but it said something about defeating it in order to perform the magic. Katya noticed that the way she was able to use the corresponding attribute of magic after eating ancient species was just like Yu's skill. She checked the book to see if Thee was a connection. The book said that ancient magic was inspired by a man who wielded the horns of a wind dragon and ruled storms which seemed exactly like Yu's charge ability. And it wasn't the same but the book mentioned something called dirks, strong legs, accumulated strength and antlers of light as she read, and figured that if Yu was unable to use the power himself, he was still able to use it through the parts of the demon's body like a weapon. You always felt that the power of demons comes from using demon weapons, and if that was the case, he wondered about yesterday's Grand Keon. They all found that amazing and interesting for sure, but Clara seemed off a little. It seemed like the journal said that he entrusted the demon book to one who can read it, and as a survivor of the Maori tribe, she was obligated to carry on the tradition, but she didn't seem sure about that. She said that she wouldn't be able to leave something for someone until the end, just like the people before him. She was insecure about her abilities and skills. She was sure that she was alive thanks to you and she probably wouldn't even make it this far. You listened to her pretty carefully and let his breath out, then yelled at her to be clear. If she didn't like it she wouldn't have to do it because it was her life. He said that they were going to continue their journey and find other survivors to take that role. Hearing his words, Clara made her decision and decided to do it. She promised to herself to find a survivor to inherit the magic and wanted their help. Katya was already in and Alicia thought more rational but was still willing to help. Now that everything was settled, their goal was to eat delicious food, try to use ancient magic, and then find a Maori left out there. In the next scene, we see Demetrius being all excited about what he was hearing. You talked about all the things they had seen in the desert and he was indeed into the topic. 
He then looked at Alicia and stated that if it weren't for the special circumstances involved, he would make a few entertaining changes and write a book about it. It would be a story about you, Clara, Katya, and Alicia, and was meant to be an adventure for the four of them. He then wished to taste the giant crab. You explained that he wanted to bring some back for him, but they didn't have a place to store food items for a long period. Demetrius decided to hear about the food later from Katya, because he guessed that you would be humble about his description. Katya confirmed him. You then remembered that he had some demon materials that could be used for weapons and asked if he would like to see them. He then took out Grand Keon pincers and bones of the Honey Marilis and a deep white shark skin. Demetrius's face was glowing from excitement. He observed the materials, the weightlessness and flexibility of the bones and the texture of the skin as it grates against his fingers, and pincers that shine like metal but way lighter than they look. He asked if he was sure all those came from natural organisms. The girls seemed pretty creeped out by him, but all he was interested in was the weapon versions of those materials and he told you to show him when it was done. You would like to do that but they weren't allowed to bring weapons into the temple. Katya confirmed that they cannot bring in weapons, so he has to give up on the idea. He seemed quite frustrated that it wasn't possible. Alicia wondered if they could have him come out of the temple, but Katya heard from another knight that he was trying to escape from the temple the other day, and he should be a little more self-aware of his position as archbishop. While they were arguing, Clara was watching them and she giggled. When she was asked, she pointed that even though it was only the second time they had met, they were all getting along great. Demetrius said that he didn't mean to be rude, but when he was like that, it didn't really seem like he was a person with a high position in the temple. Clara mentioned that Yu was enjoying himself too and she was just glad they met someone good they could trust from the Zhao religion. Alicia approached them and stated that they should get down to business as he was a busy man. Demirius asked Yu where he was going to go next. With a very confident face, Yu replied saying that their next station was Plateau of Brilliance. Meanwhile, in one of the bars in the city, the people were talking about a person named Seal, who was going to be participating in the upcoming joint search for the Plateau of Brilliant. A long-haired young woman was listening to their conversation while thinking about her drink in silence. The day before Yu's visit to Demetrius, Yu was at his hotel enjoying his comfortable bed. Katya thought Yu was the one most used to sleeping outside, but he seemed like he really missed a comfortable bed. Yu said that it was nice to sleep in an environment where he didn't have to worry about his surroundings so much. Alicia could relate to him as she was taking this sleep quality very seriously. Now that they were all settled in, Yu wanted to wrap up their work before going to bed. He asked Clara if she learned anything since then, and she said that she hadn't had a chance to read it all thoroughly yet, but there was one thing that caught his attention. She showed a page from the book and explained that this part of the book mentioned a friend of the author. It was before the Grand King had taken up residence at the entrance to the cave. He thought they were talking about a time when they had plenty of material and spiritual resources. Adding to that, there was a family he was very close to, and it seemed like he was scared that something would happen to his friends and family. The Plateau of Brilliance, despite being dangerous, was still visited by many people and there was no other way to escape the eyes of men, except the still legendary summit. You seemed excited about this. Katya didn't seem to expect this. The Plateau of Brilliance was famous. As Clara said, a lot of people were visiting the site. As the name applied, it was a plateau with something bright shining at the top. It was a huge, multi-tiered pleuro within the polar zone. The higher they went to the plateau, some people even suffered from the curse of the plateau. You asked about the curse. Katya explained that headaches, dizziness, nausea, and loss of motor skills were the symptoms with the cause being unknown. In the worst case, it could even lead to death. She had heard that symptoms vary from person to person, but it was nonetheless a curse whose origin was still a mystery. You then noticed that it was an attitude sickness. They didn't seem to know about that, so he explained that those symptoms were what happens when you go somewhere where there is not enough oxygen in the air. But he didn't know about this world, so he was just saying that might be the cause of the curse. Hopefully that was the case because there were a few ways to prevent it. He didn't want to use the word curse. Katya recalled that those symptoms also appeared at another place close to home. You explained that even though they couldn't see it or it may not seem obvious, the air was simply a collection of substances, and there was a density and thinness to it. The higher they go, the thinner and less dense the air becomes. Clara seemed pretty amazed by him, but he was humble as always. This time Katya didn't let him be though. Meanwhile, Alicia was looking at them confused as hell. Katya continued telling about the Plateau of Brilliance. She said that it was famous for the glow at the top, but not much about the curse. On top of the plateau, when the sun's out, the summit shines. But the true nature of that glow remains unknown. Every few years someone would claim to have stepped on the plateau but the testimonies don't match, so the official word was that no one had. The more Katya talked about the place, the more you seemed excited and happy, and Clara seemed to notice that. You said that they don't know the current situation of the Maori people so he felt bad for being inappropriate. 
But Clara seemed fine with it because she was also a little excited too. It was understandable since many adventurers seemed to romanticize the legend of the summit. Every year they conduct a joint polar expedition, and there is an event going on where people try to conquer the Plateau of Brilliance at the same time. The higher you go up to the plateau, the stronger the monsters become so it was popular with mid-level adventurers, because they could test their strength as well as see how far they climbed just by fighting monsters the further they go up. It would be a lot less dangerous if they were exploring together and a lot of adventurers joined on a memorial level. But Alicia noticed that this would mean there was still no one who had ever gotten to the top of the plateau in this event, which was the reason why the legend was still just a legend. That seemed good to you because there could be traces of the Maori people within that legendary summit's glow. He suggested to hurry up and find out what it was, and of course he was wondering how delicious the monsters in there. The girls seemed ready and it was settled. The second stage of their polar expedition was the Plateau of Brilliance. They also need to get their prior responsibilities sorted before they go. Clara seemed pretty sleepy so they decided to call it a night and sleep. At night you and Alicia were sharing a room but you thought it would be better to have separate rooms because he wasn't really much older than Alicia. With the redness in his face he tried to sleep turning his back on her, but Alicia called his name. Apparently she had some questions for him about tomorrow. Tomorrow was the day they report to Demetrius so you asked if something was bothering her. He was wondering if she wanted to add another room or something, but she suggested to not tell anything about the Maori and his powers when they meet with Demetrius tomorrow. Back to the present, Demetrius seemed pretty satisfied with the next place you and his team were heading. He thought it would be a good challenge for him. After all, no man or woman has been able to discover the secret of the legend. He told you to let him know if there was anything he needed. You didn't want to be a burden to him and promised to ask him if they came across any trouble getting everything they needed. Demetrius appreciates his politeness but he thinks an adventurer should be bold and ask for everything he needs. Alicia reminded you that it was time to go so you said that he would be in touch if he needed anything else and bring him a souvenir next time. Demetrius then patted Alicia's head and told her to make sure you and the others didn't get in trouble. In response, he got punched by her. She told him to stop treating her like a child before they left the room. At the city, you asked Alicia why she requested that yesterday. She said that she didn't trust Demetrius to an understandable extent. After all, they could say he was pretty much the center of Zaoism so he would be involved with many secrets, so he would have to be constantly watched. He was the one who got her out of there, and she was sure the church was keeping a close eye on him because he must have used risky methods while doing that. So at least for now, it would be best to not reveal everything. You seemed impressed by her but was too shy to say so. This led Alicia to think that he wasn't interested. You denied that to make her comfortable. Alicia thought about the moments you saved her and stated her happiness about how he helped her, even though she was helpless in the beginning. This made him even more embarrassed and he tried to come up with an excuse. Alicia noticed his shyness and strictly told him to not be shy with her. Meanwhile, Katya and Clara were in behind wondering what they were talking about. They went into the city and got a lot of things which made Alicia wonder if those would be a burden for their journey. Clara agreed that it was a little too much, but they were all necessary things for their expedition. You confirmed that it was for their own safety. He was sure that Clara knew the slippery terrain could be quite scary. Most of what he bought this time was a countermeasure to that. They were tools meant to protect her life so on the contrary, the heavier their stuff was, the better. Clara felt embarrassed as she sounded so weak when he put it like that. Meanwhile, Alicia was almost sure she had been tricked into something. You comforted them by saying they would be glad that they had this much stuff and that it was better to not regret anything. He again mentioned that they need to be careful with what tools they put their lives in. Clara found it reassuring when Yu was telling her this. Katya totally agreed with her but then suddenly sensed something behind her. When she checked, there seemed to be nothing behind them. Now that they had all the tools they needed, all they had to do was get the new weapon from the blacksmith. Then they would be ready to head to the plateau. Alicia mentioned her surprise about a workshop to exist in that part of the town. When they arrived at the shop, the man was shocked by the materials they brought. He couldn't believe he caught this in the white desert. You tried to explain that they got it from a big crab and it was the hardest monster they had defeated. The man was amazed by the pincers and asked if he was going to sell it. He was actually asked to sell it to a currency exchange shop but he didn't want to do that. The man was glad to hear that. He wanted to confirm you was okay with him handling this because he was sure that he could make a sword out of this thing. You wanted to have a sword. While they were talking Katya approached you and stated that she was a little concerned about something and asked if you felt anything wrong. She suspected that they were being followed by three people. She suggested changing the scenery for a moment and they all agreed. They changed their way and went into an alley to confirm that they were being followed. As Katya suspected, three people were behind them. Katya wasn't scared at all as she was one of the best temple knights and asked them if they had something they wanted. An awkward silence followed her question, making her understand what their aim was. 
They took out their weapons and one of them started to run towards them to attack you, but it didn't work as he had his hardening skill on. Katya didn't even need to use her sword and just punched her as hard as she could. When they defeated the female one, the other two started to attack simultaneously but then noticed something. Clara was spelling her magic and used her magic arrow. Katya swung her sword and the man's weapon was broken into pieces. Alicia also used her sleep skills to make the man sleep, and you took this chance to kick him. One of them asked the other if he could still fight but his arms wouldn't move. That defeat wasn't something they weren't expecting as Katya was with them, but the others were not to be underestimated either. Slumber was a lot trickier to deal with. You told them to end it here as they would have more trouble and reminded them that he wouldn't give them another chance if they tried to go after Alicia. They were sure that Yu was also dangerous but didn't know who he was. They stared at each other for a while and Yu was about to attack again, but Katya stopped him and told the guys to take their friend and leave. With the promise that she wouldn't follow, she asked if Yu was okay with this and he approved. Katya asked who they were and what was their purpose. She mentioned that she wasn't very good at interrogation or torture, so there was no point in trying anything else because she would just end their life. The two of them seemed pretty intimidated by her. They grabbed their friend and left the alley immediately. Yu was sweating and trembling about what just happened. Katya wasn't sure, but it could be someone from Zhao's engineering department. As for their purpose, she assumed they were after Alicia but that may not have been all they wanted. She couldn't just ignore the possibility of you and Clara had something to do with this. If it was the technical department, then they might be after Clara because of the color of her hair and for you, it would be because he was the leader of their group. Despite everything that Katya was saying, Alicia was pretty sure that they were just after her. She bowed and thanked them for helping her. Clara and Yu giggled as they knew she was not being honest with herself. Alicia got super embarrassed and told them that she was putting in a lot of effort to be like that. Meanwhile, Katya was still thinking about the aim of the attack. She was sure they were after Alicia, but if that was their only goal, they could have done a better job. They also might just gag their strength with that attack, which made Katya realize how they were getting much stronger. They fought as well as first-class adventurers if not better. The way in which they won was near perfect. Since Katya met Yu, she had felt a lot stronger and she knew she was not imagining it. She figured that anyone who ate Yu's cooking seemed to get a boost in magic power. The power of making a meal that makes people a lot stronger just by eating would be so valuable to others, people from all over the world, and they would seek out Yu's cooking. There was no doubt there would be a fight over Yu. Like the Maori people used to be, the whole world would be looking for him. While she was dozing off with those thoughts, Yu called for her to inform her that it was time to go. Katya decided to keep that thought to herself and smiled at him. They were heading to the guild when Clara suggested eating something before they went there. You didn't mind, but since they were going to the guild to sign up for the joint search, he thought they could eat in the guild cafeteria. Katya said that the place was more like a bar rather than a diner. Most of the food was served as a snack to go with the drinks and the seasoning was strong with small portions. So if they were looking to fill their stomach, it wouldn't be a good idea to eat there. You agreed that drinking wouldn't be good as a lunch, but he wasn't familiar with what to get. So he asked if they had any recommendations. Katya didn't come around here often, so it was an opportunity to explore the area, but Alicia was starving as her tummy was growling. That's why it would be best to just go to the nearest restaurant. Considering Alicia's stomach size, she would be better off at the stalls than in the guild, but the last time Clara and he went around exploring the stalls, he ate everything in sight. Clara had an idea and she suggested going to the Potato Guys store. You found it a good idea while Katya was questioning who he was. You explained that they found a guy serving sweet potatoes and it was delicious. Clara added that there were other interesting things too. Alicia seemed quite excited about the food as she was literally starving. They started to head towards the store and noticed that there were too many potato stalls in the city. You didn't think the idea of patents existed in this world so it couldn't be helped. Potato chips were easy to make and he knew this kind of thing would happen. Katya asked you if he come up with the potato chips idea, and he explained that it wasn't something original but he did introduce them to it. He noticed that in such a short period they came up with so many innovations to make chips. Clara then pointed at somewhere asking if that place was the potato guy's place. You were shocked to see that the line for that shop was so long. He wondered what the sign in the shop said and Clara translated that it said the original potato chips. The man noticed them and seemed like he was happy to see them. They got in the line and after a while it was their turn. You stated his surprise to see he was doing the best compared to all the other stalls. But being the original can't be the only reason why he was doing so well, as he said. The man agreed and said that it was because he was putting butter on top of the potato. You was shocked that he thought of that. He explained that he tried using butter as a new flavoring for potato chips, but it didn't match with the popularity of the salty flavor that you taught him. But the butter seemed to be going well with steamed potatoes, and soon enough potato butter became popular. 
You seemed amazed, but the man was sure it would be copied in no time and he would have to come up with a new potato dish. You wanted to get a boiled potato and potato butter. You were sure everyone would like the potato butter if they liked potatoes. When he tasted it, he felt the gentle texture in his mouth. The sweet potatoes in this world had more sweetness in them and had a unique aroma. Katya also tasted it and liked that each bite tasted like it was calculated, even though it was a simple dish. Alicia's eyes were sparkling by the taste of it, she didn't even wait to swallow it first to express her approval. They all finished their food and the man was glad that they liked it and hoped that he would be able to cook something they don't know. But he had no idea they were adventurers and hoped that they weren't getting into anything dangerous. This made you laugh and he explained that he considered himself a food lover and was interested in how strong monsters tasted. And he promised to tell him about good stories later. The man then wondered if he was signing up for that joint exploration event. You confirmed, but he wasn't worried that much. Katya said that even though no one had beaten it, it didn't look like there had been too many fatalities either. However, there were a few suicidal fools who tried to take on more than they could handle and ended up getting themselves killed. They seemed pretty nervous about the dying people, but the potato man assumed they were smart and didn't think they would be in trouble. He then mentioned a group of famous adventurers. The only reason he was telling them this was because people were getting excited, and there was a rumor going around that they were going to have their first breakthrough. You wondered what kind of people they were. He didn't know much about that, but he heard that she was young, like the kid of some famous adventurer. You found her reputation quite fair if that was the case. Meanwhile, at the Adventurer's Guild, a young girl named Seal was receiving her participation card for the joint search. She heard people in the guild gossiping about her and glared at them. With her one look, they even stopped looking at her. Clara grabbed Yu's arm with a concerned face. You understood that it would be a problem for them if someone else reached the summit of the Plateau of Brilliance. If they get ahead of them, they may take anything that could lead them to the Maori people. And if the Maori were recognized as still in existence, the search could spread around the world again. With a big smile on his face, Yu promised Clara that they would be the first to reach the summit. She seemed relieved after that. Now that they were full, it was time to go. The Potato Man and Yu fist pumped and Yu remembered something. He wanted Clara to take notes on what he was about to say. He handed the man a paper that had some recipes to arrange potato chips and potato butter. They then left the shop and the man checked the paper. It was written about potato chips seasoned with salt and sansom, and in addition to serve with sweet potato butter, adding a side of fish, squid shiokara. He wondered how many other amazing things you knew. Before you and the girls went to the guild, you told them to wait and go somewhere. When they started to worry about him, he came back and explained that he found something interesting at a food stall. It was chocolate wrapped in fruit. The last time he went around the market, all he saw were drinks and simple solid chocolate, and then out of nowhere, he saw those. He bought one for each of them, so he suggested eating before they go to the guild. When you tasted it, the taste wasn't like what he expected. It was quite sour rather than sweet. The sweetness of the fruit itself wasn't that strong, and it reminded him of strawberry chocolate. Clara and Katya also found it amazing how it had both sour and sweet taste in it. Alicia wanted to eat this all day long. Finally, they arrived at the Adventurer's Guild, and Yu was taken aback by the building. Alicia didn't think there was something special about it, but Clara assumed that in Yu's world, they didn't have one of those. He wanted to open the door himself and made a loud entrance to the guild, causing him to get everyone's attention. People didn't seem very friendly to see him. Katya told him to not worry about them and started to walk ahead. The other adventurers weren't expecting a temple knight, especially Katya, to be with him. Clara found it amazing how they started freaking out when they saw Katya's uniform. Katya explained that temple knights were supposed to be the ones who crack down on adventurers and give them a hard time, so it wasn't like they were doing them any favors. Even the receptionist girl seemed pretty nervous, and when Katya stated that they were applying to participate in the joint expedition, everyone was stunned because temple knights weren't allowed to register for adventures. But Katya explained that they had been authorized and showed the permit. After a few minutes, everything was done. The receptionist girl showed the membership card as well as their participation card for the joint expedition. It seemed that Zaoism was paying for their participation in this event, but if they lose this card, they would be charged to have it reissued. Now that they were done here, Katya asked what they were going to do now. They still got some time before nightfall, so they got some time to try out some new dishes. He then noticed that the people were still staring at them, so he asked Katya. Before Katya answer, someone stepped up and said that they looked like they couldn't do anything kind of people. It was Seal. You asked what she meant by that. She said that the adventurer's mortality rate was low on this joint quest. You knew that because adventurers help each other. Unless they were willing to put themselves in danger, this joint quest encouraged adventurers to help each other. In case of overconfidence in one's own abilities or in case of life-threatening problems such as running out of supplies, participants cover for each other to ensure safety. Suicidal and otherwise, the adventurers make up for their failures and continue to climb the plateau of brilliance to test their skills. He asked if he was wrong, and Seal stated that the Polar Expedition was not a game. 
Once the joint expedition begins, if they get themselves into danger, they would have to come and help them. None of them wanted to be dragged down by them, implying that they were going to slow them down. She said that he didn't seem to know much about the world, and Clara looked like she had to take care of the two other girls. Since they didn't look very experienced to her, she suggested they withdraw before they put themselves in harm's way. You figured that she was a veteran adventurer. He assured her that he would be careful and wanted to know her name. Seal introduced herself and left there. After she left, you and the girls also decided to go. Alicia seemed pretty annoyed that Seal judged them by their looks. Katya found it understandable but the only thing they needed to show them how it's done. Clara was surprised that Katya wasn't angry. Katya, with a pretty comfortable face, said that they didn't have to prove anything as they were veteran. She didn't know if Seal knew she was a temple knight but no matter how strong a knight is, it was a different story on how well they can adapt to the polar region's environment. It was one of the jobs of a temple knight to rescue missing persons in the polar regions, so she could understand why they would want to get people to stop participating before it becomes too dangerous. She was not averse to serious people like that, but she remembered that she heard the name Francel before, and it was a proud and honorable thing to be the child of a famous adventurer. She found it honorable that she was the one who played the ad guy to protect others. Some adventurers make their living exploring the polar regions, while others are inspired by the adventure of uncharted landscapes. Some of them were just tourists, and they were going to get hurt and cause trouble for others. But of course, some of them were just being hostile to them. Basically, it was safe to assume that those who constantly explored the polar regions were proud to be an adventurer. Therefore, if they showed them what they were capable of, their perspective towards them would change. Yu was now motivated to reach the top and knock some sense into them. Katya was impressed by his courage and stated that it was possible to achieve their goals with this group, and told Clara to have a little more confidence in her magic. Clara got embarrassed and thanked her. While they were talking, Katya watched them and thought she could become as strong as she wanted to be. The day of departure came and the weather was pretty sunny which increased the mood. Katya suggested boarding early as it was about to get crowded but Yu wanted to be on deck while they said. When they entered the ship it was time for Alicia to sleep. She told them to wake her up when they left and fell asleep in a second. Yu was envious of her ability to fall asleep anywhere quickly. Katai also knew how difficult not being able to sleep well in the mountains, so she was envious of her as well. Clara asked about Katya's mission as it would be hard with the bugs being around her. She explained that back when she was still with the Night Order, they would set up a barrier to ward them off. The main purpose was to detect demons and also to act as a barrier against the weaker ones. And while they were at it, it also stopped insects from getting in. It worked but sometimes they still managed to get in. While they were chatting, Katya noticed that Yu's new sword was with him and wanted to see it. Yu had been wanting to show it to someone so he took out and introduced his new sword as the Grand Keon's sword. This even woke Alicia, and she stated how pretty it was. Katya had never seen such a crimson sword and wanted to hold it. It was her first time seeing a highly flexible thin blade with a slight curve on it. The sword was highly practical and interesting. You said that in his hometown there was a sword called Katana and the shape of his sword was just like a katana, but this time he left everything to the blacksmith. When he was using the material it naturally took this shape. Whenever Yu held the sword he felt like he was holding the spear of the deer. He can try using his new skills. Clara wondered if it had something to do with the fact that it was an ancient species. Alicia found it highly probable or maybe the creatures that were not aware of their abilities have the potential. You wondered if the material alone wasn't enough because it was useless if it was not turned into a weapon. It was time to depart so they ended their conversation in there and went outside. They could see the Plateau of Splendor and wondered what kind of place it was. Alicia heard that it was a great place and was excited to see the scenery. One of the employees on the ship gave the signal that the ship had sailed and their journey began. After a while, they arrived at their destination. Everyone was amazed at how Plateau was so huge and shining at the top. Not only them, but the other adventurers were also excited and felt competitive about the treasures on the top of it. Katya asked Yu about his plan and he explained that they didn't want to be late to the party so it was time to go. They started to walk and Katya seemed pretty satisfied by the shoes. Leisha thought it would be tiring as they were a little heavy but she was wrong. He had heard that the Plateau of Splendor had a lot of rocky terrain, but luckily he had the right material for the shoe. They were similar to what they would call hiking shoes where he was from. The soles were so hard he couldn't even bend his feet easily, so they would quickly get tired on flat roads but they were great for slopes and rocky. Besides, they made quite a big difference depending on if they had this or not. When Katya looked at the other adventurers, she knew that the equipment was too specialized to only be used for fighting demons and lots of people having a hard time just by walking. While they were walking, Yu was trying to find a place that seemed easier to climb, but it looked like everyone had the same idea. He wondered if they should be here a little earlier, but it was fine according to Katya. On which tier were they located on the plateau was generally determined by the composition of their party, 
as well as their overall experience. Most vanguards were generally positioned to the front while their opposites, the mages and healers, remained in the back as rear guard. The vanguards and the rear guards used their magic powers differently. It was also directly related to their physical ability. If they compare them to water, the vanguard is water constantly flowing through a hose, whereas the rear guard is a bucked which stores the water and only gets used as needed. This allows the vanguards to maintain a state of high alert while the rear guard can deploy overwhelming firepower when needed. It wasn't uncommon for a party of adventurers to be without a rear guard. The focus was moving forward because they had to go on in the harshest of expeditions. In their case, you and Katya would be the vanguard while Clara and Alicia would be the rear guard. The rear guard uses less magical power to strengthen their bodies, thus being inferior to the vanguard in terms of physical strength. It can't be helped that they were late to be in the front part of the line. If they pushed themselves too hard, they would accidentally lose sight of what they were capable of. Seal appeared, stating her curiosity about their situation. Yu thanked her with an annoyed face. She warned them to not let their guard down as there was more to the plateau than it seemed and left. It was clear that Alicia didn't like her, but Katya found her right as their equipment and knowledge didn't decide their status in the polar regions. They suddenly heard a loud roar it seemed like the reason why they shouldn't let their guard down was coming right at them. It was a bunch of rock goats. They were fast and not only their horns but also their legs were dangerous. Rather than being scared Yu took out his sword and seemed quite excited that he was finally testing his new sword. A few of them were coming towards him and he seemed pretty ready to attack but Katya jumped and defeated it. When he was about to go for the other one, Clara came and used her ballista power to kill the two others. Now it was his turn to test the new skills he got in the white desert. He used his predator ability and turned the ground into water and disappeared. Meanwhile, Alicia froze the goats and taking advantage of the opportunity, Yu used his sword to tear them into pieces. Katya was taken aback by Yu's power. She had a pretty good idea of what she could expect, but what she saw in front of her eyes was more than she could have imagined. It was a demon's abilities, and a demon's weapons combined with man's greatest weapon, Yu's intelligence, and could destroy everything at its path. Yu exhaled and noticed that he made a mistake. He forgot to drain the blood which made him look. This made Katya seem relieved and glad that the person who held this much power was Yu. It was a bit early but Yu wanted to prepare the food now. It was a good omen to have such a good catch and a great start this early. Clara couldn't wait to see what this tasted like and was glad to eat a demon's meat after a long time. In today's menu, you wanted to try and make yakiniku, which is a type of Japanese barbecue. Even though the girls didn't know what it meant, they were super excited. You mentioned that he had tried to process it and it seemed like the rock goat meat had a particular smell. So he decided to try and counteract that this time. First, he made a sauce with lots of ingredients in it to decrease the smell and marinate the meat in the sauce. The next step was to prepare the vegetables and dip them in the sauce while stir-frying them. The smell of the food attracted everyone. Once the vegetables were cooked, he transferred them to another container and then grilled the meat before it cooled down. When the flipped meat started to curl up, he fried it in the remaining sauce as if he were boiling it. Finally, he put the mat on top of the stir-fried vegetables and the food was ready to go. They started to eat before it got cold and were astonished by the taste. The sweetness, the smell, and the texture were pretty good and well mixed. The vegetables and the sweetness of the sauce were so delicious together. As Alicia loved the food, she talked pretty detailed and poetic about it which made them stare impressed. Yu was glad that they were satisfied with it this time as well. They ate everything and continued to climb. One week later, Yu came out of his tent and noticed that the number of tents was decreasing a lot. He woke everyone up and they continued to walk. Clara also noticed that the others had also thinned out. Katya said that they had already climbed a lot and the gap between the leading and lagging parties was widening. She assumed there were fewer and fewer adventurers who continued to explore in the first place. It looked like they were about halfway up the plateau which means they were literally in the second half of the season. Even though they were aiming for the peak, they had only reached halfway but the other looked tired too. It seemed like they were pretty good at climbing and didn't even touch the emergency ration yet. You thought he was getting too carried away but Katya would say the adventurers who had made it this far were quite skilled, but they were still fatigued and demoralized. Among those who can still walk and chat, Yu was indeed strong. Clara wondered why she hadn't felt too tired and assumed it was thanks to Yu's food. Yu stated his standards when cooking and he heard that good food was good for morale which was probably true. But Katya didn't believe any of that. It was true that the ingestion of food had a restorative effect on mana, but it was essentially a minor one. Raising the level of Yu's cooking's restorative effect ability in both of those areas, the skill had reached the point of magic. They suddenly heard a strong roar and it was a spike leopard which was a level 2 ranked high level monster. Katya immediately took charge and told the tired ones to retreat and Clara put up a defensive barrier. Katya and Yu were in front of the leopard. The leopard attacked him with its needles. 
Yu activated his hardening skill, but the needles were very destructive. The leopard jumped and continued to attack them with its needles. Katya and Yu noticed that the needle didn't have an infinite range. But if they keep staring at each other, he might recover sooner or later, so Yu wanted to get him before he recovers. They simultaneously started to run towards the leopard, which made him run away as he didn't have that much power now, but Yu didn't have any plan to let him get away. He caught the leopard eventually, and injured him with his sword. The other adventurers were amazed by Yu's power and felt sorry for underestimating him. He seemed quite confused while the others were apologizing to Katya for judging her for being a knight. A dark-skinned man approached to Yu and asked why he helped them when they were so rude to him. There was actually no particular reason for him to help. He stated that he would feel bad if he left them to die just because they pissed him off. And besides, that was what a joint search was all about. This made the man quite relieved and thanked him again for saving their lives. They were going down while you and his team were still going up, so he asked you to tell him the story the next time they were up here. And lastly, he asked him to take care of Seal. After all, Seal and you would be the only ones who would be there. After they left there, you decided to have a meal as they were all exhausted. Not so long later, the dinner was ready. You mentioned that he couldn't come up with it this time, but he did manage to cook it. It was Horned Leopard Ban Ban style. They seemed quite excited about the food and it didn't wait any longer to try it. The food was tasty. The fat content of the Horned Leopard's meat was low and the flavor was light, so he tried it with a mayonnaise-based sesame sauce and it seemed like it was the right choice. Alicia couldn't help but describe every bite she had with fancy words. Katya also stated that she could eat as much as she wanted without getting sick. The sauce was rich, but the meat was much less fatty and healthier, so he confirmed that they could eat it without gaining any weight. Three days later, Yu was practicing his skills. He released magical power all around his body activating his thornskin skill. And then he tried to throw out his needles and it was a success. Katya said that Igrapalso's ability was a combination of offensive and defensive magic armor. It seemed to have high offensive power, but it was useful. Yu wasn't sure about that because even though it had good defense and attack power, he had to be strong to use it. The Horned Leopard was a type of demon that was stronger than its abilities. If anything, even the demons with hardening were weak. So the strength of one's ability was not necessarily proportional to the strength of the monster. Clara was watching Katya and Yu discussing and noticed that Alicia seemed tired. But she denied that she was tired. Yu informed them that they were about to leave. They walked for a long time until Clara gave up and needed a break. There were some strong monsters up there so it would be best to get some rest. Katya seemed fine which impressed Clara but she denied it and stated that it was amazing that Clara could make it this far. Considering that she had come this far while fighting demons along the way, she would say she was tougher than a bad vanguard. You also found her great and turned to Alicia to praise her too, but she was on the verge of fainting. You immediately held her while she was saying she was just a little tired, which made him mad that she hadn't told them earlier. He asked her to give him as much detail as she could about how she felt at that moment. She said that she had a headache and felt nauseous, which was the curse of the plateau. You didn't know about that, but he had an idea that it was altitude sickness. The girls seemed worried, but as long as they didn't do anything wrong, they would be fine. Firstly, they need to take a break, and if it doesn't feel better, the best way to heal it is to go back down. They would go back the way they came, which means they would lower the elevation of where they were now. The most common cause of altitude sickness was a sudden drop in blood oxygen levels due to changes in atmospheric pressure. If you get sick from climbing a mountain, you should descend the mountain. It was highly probable that you would recover, but it was better to take a rest until the symptoms subsided. You stated that he was going to find a place to rest for now and warned Alicia that it was going to be a little bumpy, but she had to be patient. When he saw her face, he felt sorry and apologized for yelling at her out of nowhere. They continued looking for a place where the wind couldn't get them as it was chilly. Clara and Katia were asking Alicia questions about her comfort, which made her teared up a little. Suddenly, you heard something. Katya also heard it, and it was the sound of a battle from a close place. Almost all the other adventurers were descending and the only one who left was Seal. Katya asked Yu about his plan. Yu was almost sure Seal was a very capable person, and they should leave her alone and let Alicia get some rest as soon as possible, but he still had a very bad feeling about this. He decided to at least check on her and heard a noise behind a rock. When they checked, Seal was lying there motionless. Seal was injured by a huge monster. Without thinking anything, Yu attacked him with his head, making it collapse. Seal tried to talk to them but Katya stopped as her wound was deep. Katya had to leave the monster to you and carried Seal to a safe place after warning him to be careful as the monster was called Drow's Eider. And as he saw, it was a powerful demon with arms that could expand and contract. The thing in front of him was more like a monster and didn't make him hungry at all so he wanted to finish this as soon as possible. The monster reached its hand to him but he successfully dodged but couldn't hit him as he was fast. He dodged its attacks until he found an opening but this time the monster was really a pain in the ass. He had no choice but to use his dragon breath but his skin was so hard that he doubted if he could pierce it. 
the monster started grinning which made him even more annoyed. The only thing that he could use against the drowsy was the ability charge. However, he didn't bring his double-edged sword as a catalyst for this quest. Another ability that may work is the Ice Flash. He had to remain on guard even when he was casting magic. The monster was attacking him so rapidly that he couldn't even focus on the target. Katya's help would be great, but Clara and the others needed her escort, so he was on his own now. He had no choice but to take him down himself, but he knew he wouldn't be able to defend himself with a sword for much longer. Then he noticed that his palms were not as hard as his skin, so in that case, he released his hardening and when the monster was about to grab him, he activated the spine skill to capture him. He then exploded his whole body. When the monster was dead, he checked his body and was sure that there weren't any edible parts. He ran towards the girls asking about their situations. Alicia was fine and her breathing was getting better now that she was resting. As for Seal, she barely survived. The wound could be closed in two days, but she wouldn't be able to move for a while even with Clara's healing magic. Either way, Yu was relieved that it wasn't as serious as it seemed. Yu decided to set up camp, but Katya told him that she would take care of that because he was tired. While Yu was resting, Clara apologized for not being able to help him, but she seemed even more tired than Yu. He told Clara to not push herself too hard as she would collapse from overworking herself. She knew that, but wanted him to let her try just a little harder. Seal spoke and stated that it was too late for her. Yu said that she needed to stay in bed a little longer because her condition was still unstable. She was shocked that Yu was able to save her as he was supposed to be dead by now. Yu ignored her and stated that she could thank Clara, but she tried to stand which made her cough non-stop. She wanted to ask something to Yu. He said that as long as she didn't force herself, she could. She asked why he risked it to save her even though she was sure he didn't like her. Yu was asked this before, but even though she asked that this was an event where they helped each other get back safely, and it didn't matter whether he hated or liked someone. Besides, he mentioned that they didn't hate her. They just thought she was a jerk at first. Yu noticed the tears in her eyes, which was surprising. He didn't want to embarrass her, so he decided to go get some food after warning Clara to not push herself too hard. When he left, Clara mentioned how kind Yu was and Seal agreed. After a while, Yu prepared some food and brought it to Clara. She was glad that she finally had the time to eat. Yu was glad that Yu liked it and mentioned that Alicia also seemed to be feeling better. He looked at Seal without knowing how to call her and she said that Seal was fine. He said that he made some food for her too, but she refused as she felt like it was a charity. However, her tummy didn't seem to like this decision. Yu insisted that she should eat because it was a vital part of her recovery. She couldn't resist any longer and accepted to eat it. She wondered what kind of soup was that and Yu explained that it was snake. Clara asked if it was difficult for her to eat snakes. But Seal had a snake before when she was still at the party. She was marooned in the polar circle and they took all their food with them so they had to eat the demons. The snake's texture was like chewing on sand. But when she tasted the soup it was pretty different and a lot better than the one she had eaten before. The atmosphere was different from that of the bar so he wondered why she acted like that before. She didn't understand why he was asking this but explained that the goal was to keep adventurers like her out. People who used to be her friends abandoned her because she was immature. She thought they were pretty good friends before that so she didn't do something like that. She thought she didn't want them to end up like her or was simply just being envious of their bond. But she was wrong and if it wasn't for them, she would be dead now. So she thanked them. She wondered about their name and they introduced themselves. After that, Seal wanted to go to sleep as she was a little tired from all the talking. Yu agreed as good food and a reasonable amount of sleep were all she needed. Clara and Yu left her tent and started to have a talk. Today was tiring for both of them, but the most important thing was Clara saved Seal with her efforts. They started to look at the stars and Clara wondered if Yu felt this way when they first met. She explained that it was kind of like how Seal told them to forget her and leave her behind. She wasn't as adamant as her but essentially said the same thing. But Yu had never given up on her. Yu just answered that that was what he would do in a situation like that. Clara first thought this was unusual because she wouldn't be able to help someone when her life was also in danger. But when she was in a situation like that, where she knew that she was the only one who could do it, she realized that she understood a little bit of how he felt at that time. She thought that she could catch up, but Yu didn't think there was much to catch up on because she was amazing already. There were so many things that only she was capable of. He mentioned that if he was in her shoes, he would brag about how he was one of a kind and wouldn't have thought to look for any other survivors. But his way of thinking and Clara's way of thinking was an expression of themselves and their individuality, so anyone who could express themselves this way was pretty amazing. Clara was impressed by his words and thanked him with a cute face and stated that she was glad to have met him. Yu's face turned to the Fifty Shades of Red and started to shatter about some things. He found an excuse to go as he was too embarrassed. Clara didn't say anything and they all went to bed. That is the end of the recap for now. Please read the pinned comment about the next part.